five, number three, Vivaldi G minor first movement continued. Page three and four. Ugh. Page one and two, already done that. If you need to go find it, go look for it. I am going to start at um, the last tutti. So, da, 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 yum. The bottom of the second page. And let's have a little playthrough of that tutti chunk until we get to the solo. And. too nasty in there maybe just watch out for the a flat at the top of the page yeah and then the string crossings maybe the shift bar 111 now we have a whole note to get up to that position so it's easy let's just play over it one more time I expect that everything there is pretty straightforward and piano for the next solo. The Boeing's old, but let's just take it slowly. Next bit. Check your F naturals correct in the last two bars there. Again the solo and bows are the easier this is to play if you're using a lot of bow it's really hard to stop and cross keep it just you know in the back of your hand and your wrist as much as possible one more time and one more time a little faster too fast for you tell me to pause you go practice it ten times then come back and we'll do the next bit during that rest you're gonna hop into that position and get your dolce tone on so strong tummy light bow arm let's do that again F sharp listen into that note one more time really sting those staccatos ready and Shift down to second position. We want an E natural, so it's got a ring. Again, second position set. I was a little flat, I'm sorry about that. Again, ready, play. One more time, ready, play. Let's play the third position one, then the second position one. Ready, bar th 119. First position. What, hang on, who, what? Oh, let's be careful there with the second finger crossing over. B flat, cross over second finger. Not new old but worth being careful about at this stage when we're playing it slowly you think oh i can just sneak my first finger across there newsflash you don't have time 
not at proper tempo and it's messy so it's two one two that's the correct fingering please play it again one more time then retake and reset your second finger to C sharp so from 119 let's play that again think about what you're both doing don't worry too much about the dynamics right now intonation and bow control. Ready, and. Did you see it? I'm doing sneaky retakes at the end of every phrase. So when I play da da da, up, down, up, fly, da da da, up, down, up, fly, da da da, up, down, up, fly, da da da, up, down, up, fly. Now, that kind, kind of feels stupid, but it's actually worth doing without playing anything because you get the hang of what your muscles are meant to do. Helps a lot. Ready, play. I am at the tip. Fly. fourth finger there. Don't use an E. Sounds crappy. Much nicer to cross and play your whole slur on A string. Okay, let's play that running, 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 running. 127 starting on a B flat. This is a good spot to mark some tones and semitones if you're finding your intonations pitchy. bizarre because there's a lot of ringing notes in the second bar of that but that's the usually the bar that's out of tune and it's usually usually out of tune because the fingers are all tones apart it's worth practicing it and it's worth marking it so you don't stumble start again from the four three two three one twenty seven tones four rings, elbow through, oh on the A we have to do something, we have to go to third position, and drop the third finger on D string, shift, oh did you notice something about that fingering, the first set has a semitone in it, Three and two touch, one rings. When you shift down, three rings, two rings, and one's another tone away. So you have that tone spacing again that our hands go, mm, don't really like that. Tough, mark it in your music. Let's try. Shift. Ready, go. Again, I'm stopping so that you can shift accurately, but obviously we want to kick that gap out. <gasps> shift. Again, let's get rid of the gap. Go. If that A isn't quite accurate, practice this. Second finger, third finger. Second finger, third finger. And just keep switching it so that you understand what your shift is with your muscles, not just your brain. Okay, let's try from the start of the solo. Before we make that chunk any bigger, let's make sure we've got what we're doing up to there. So, 114, end of the third line. Ya da 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 da. Ready, and. Fly. 
fly. Fly. How are we going? If that's too difficult, please stop me here and go back and play that stuff. Find which little chunk is niggling at you still and rehearse it. Give yourself 10 ticks. If you stuff up on the way to 10, start again at one. It's brutal, but it's a really good way to kick out mistakes and to get comfortable with things very, very quickly. If you're ready to go on, elephant, elephant. We hit a change in our stride. It feels like changing from Counter to a gallop, it really does. So, tucka, 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 ta da, ta, ta da, ta. You've got to divide your beats really differently. Well, we stay in second position, so that's awesome. Your left hand doesn't really worry. Um, it's just about your bow changing stride. Start at 131, 3 2, 1 2, 3 2, 1 2, 3 2, 1 2, 3 2, 1 2, triplets and triplets and triplets and triplets, and there you go. Let's do that little bit. that stuff Ooh. have you got your shifts marked in if you haven't stop and put them in because otherwise it's difficult make sure your elbows ready to come through to support your crossing onto G when you hop into that high third position with first finger ready and Always using the open strings as your shifts. Uh, this is Vivaldi, happens all the time. One more time. Same spot, bar 131, tucka, 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 tucka. position and I need to get to fifth. This is something you're going to want to rehearse. What's our ghost note? Second finger moving into fifth position is going to play as a G natural. So let's practice. Yeah, shop around and find it. Like this is a process of discovery. If you can work out the infrastructure, it's really helpful. D natural. Up to G natural. Mm -hmm. You can play them in first position. If your ears are having trouble. Remember as always that when we are shifting to fifth position, our hand comes around the violin. So we're not facing um, palm reflecting nose anymore. Palm is now reflecting like the body of the violin. So if I have sometimes drawn a smiley face on the back of my hand in lessons. You don't see it in second position, you don't see it in third position, but fourth and fifth, hello, you're gonna see that smiley face in the back of my hand. Not because my violin's coming across, but because my hand's changed its center of balance. So, let's play the D to G second finger. Ready, second position, second finger. Fifth position, again. As you're coming up, you only want the tip of your thumb and your tip of your second finger. There. Okay, that kind of works. Ooh. Nothing else is touching. I'm not squeezing. I don't have the back of my first finger on. I have lots of oxygen around my violin, and that's how I can move really easily. So I go from second position, poik my hand around, and just my thumb and the tip of my second finger are touching. That's all. Nothing else is touching my violin. Again. Is it ringing? That's a good sign. Again. Now drop the third finger on. 
should resonate. It's an A natural. So we, we should get a sparkly sensation off that note. Ready, go. One note each. Again. Again. One more. Feel free to tell me to stop talking, i.e. press the pause button and do it 20 times yourself. When you've got it, let's take the second finger out so we hear da, da. But we don't want the second ghost note in the middle. We just want... Oh, sorry, pitchy. I'm moving on my second finger. I'm dropping the third finger on when I get there. And once, once you've got there and you can get there consistently, you want to add the next part of the phrase on. Sorry, <laughs> stuffed it. You always want two fingers touching the fingerboard, the old finger and the one you're about to play. So here I am in second position. I shift up, I've still got second finger on and I put down the three. I step the two across and for a second I have two fingers on the fingerboard. I release the three. I have this two on and I put the four on. I'm gonna keep the two cause I don't need to take it off. Squish the three on behind the four. Squish the one on behind the two. Put the two down. Ah. So you can help yourself here by marking the semitones across the strings. When you play. That's a semitone across the strings, three and four. Edge three across. Sneak one up. The one and the two, C sharp and D natural, semitone. So don't be scared of writing out on your music, it really helps. Then you escape and you come down. Dead easy. Getting into fifth position takes a little work. You'll remember that we just practiced it a heap in the second piece of book five, right? When we played. Which I will now make up. Same skill. So let's play from 136 triplets. what we're going to practice. Ready? Play! Shoot! Woohoo! Again! Squash! Shift! One more time for good luck. And... And I bet you didn't even notice that that was a tutti section. No, you did because you've already highlighted all the solos and the tutties in your music. Uh huh, that's really helpful. If you haven't, do it now. Feeling good? You can either stop here and go practice that page, or we can continue on. Fourth page. Yes, I am wildly exaggerating those lifts, but they're there and they sound great. And when you get up to play La Folia, will be dead easy because you've developed the bow control here. I think taking your bow off and putting it on again is a hugely underrated skill. It's really important. You need your bow hold to be working beautifully, those squishy fingers, mm. and you need your arm to have a sense of following your hand a lot. So whenever you're 
<laughs> How do I put this? Whenever you're crossing from a high pitch string to a low pitch string, your arm is following your hand, okay? Hand goes, arm follows. Whenever you're coming from a low pitch string to a high pitch string, your arm leads and your hand follows. So we have our whole arm working together all the way from the shoulder joint, which is really talking about more the spine because we need a soft back to allow our shoulder to move and that joint to rotate. All the way from our spine to our fingertips, working as one connected thing. Okay, don't try breaking it apart. Your fingers are just like the suspension in a car. Okay, they're not separate to the rest of the car, but they're responding to the way the car behaves. We have a texture here where we want to lift the bow off the string and put it back on again. You're gonna need your fingers for that fine motor control. You're gonna need your arm for the brute force of lifting the bow. And you're going to need your spine to let your shoulder move loosely like that. So everything's working together. Playing with a bulldog in your lap really isn't ideal, but otherwise he just sulks and cries. Okay, solo. Yum, ta, 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 ta. Let's try. And. to make sure you have all the slurs in the right spot I strongly advise highlighting them if you haven't already because they often go weird in this spot I don't know why and motion where I've gotten up to bar 161 and it's two four three four two four three four make sure you've got nice tight semi tones again I am cheating a little bit I hold my second finger on fingers coming on supported I just find my intonation is much more reliable if I leave the second finger there it's up to you if you have always got great intonation for your E flats maybe you just don't need that I think it's a reasonably good idea to keep it there let's go again from the upbeat to 161 one two four three four ready and Let's keep going. If you haven't, you know to hit the pause button and practice it. And. How good is recycling a phrase, right? On we go. which is really easy. Let's try again from ya ta ta da ta 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 da ta where the string changing gets a little bit niggly and uh, then we have our Lagamonte at 167 where we come rolling down the hill and then we have a bunch of accents where we have to be careful that we don't uh, push the bow down to the string but we kind of pull the bow along the string right ready and <laughs> Cross. Accent. 
Last to T. Watch your A flat. Secret. You know 90% of this piece already. Possibly even 99%. I don't think there's anything really new in here. It's kind of like Gossip Gavotte. This is a piece that says, have you been paying attention? Have you actually learnt all the stuff we've introduced you to? Like Gossip Gavotte is a fact checker for book one. Have you actually learnt how to move your second finger accurately from natural to sharp? Have you actually learnt how to stop and cross? Have you actually learnt how those slurs cross strings? This is kind of the same thing. This is, have you actually mastered your Vivaldi A minor concerto? Have you actually got the hang of accents and smooth slurs and staccato slurs and huge crossings and huge shifts and small shifts because they're often the hard ones but I don't think there's anything new in here that you've never done or seen before if you can find something please tell me I'm happy to be corrected really really happy to be corrected but I'm pretty sure that you know everything in here already most of the answers to this piece are either in Vivaldi A minor or in book three. Yeah, true story. And if you find anything in here that you've never come across, please tell me what it is. I would love to know. Good luck.